الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم والذين يقولون ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما صدق الله العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين My dear respected listeners Last week we had talked about a few practical points on how to inculcate Islamic values and raise our children as good Muslims. And we had talked about the two biggest, you may call it, don'ts living here that we have to keep them away and protected from all sorts of exposure to screen. It diminishes, as proven med- medically, their mental capacities, but much more serious is the fact that they diminish and make them alienated to Islamic values and our upbringing and our akhlaq in terms of what the Prophet ﷺ has taught us. And second is exposure to our children to the environment of public schools where uh, children are exposed to all sorts of zina and drinking and uh, all sorts of immodesties may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us they are made they are taught to question Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are taught to question the ways of family that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam has taught us and shown us and the and they are they are made to understand it as normal and acceptable those things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has punished. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. At the core of all those things is to be very mindful, to be very watchful over the kind of company that our children are keeping. Because company is going to either make them or destroy them. As long as they are Young, you are their company. You should be their company. And you should be the best company, the best Islamic company, the best Islamic exposure, not only by words, by actual doing. Therefore, we see that in those households where salah is given importance, children automatically get it from their parents. That there is a certain time when my father leaves for the masjid and my mother prays at home and this child grows up seeing their parents doing that so oftentimes we see that the child is barely able to stand but he starts to imitate his parents in salah may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding our children are constantly looking at us are constantly learning from us whatever our life would have been may have been before we ever have children we should forget about it and we should think that this is when we have a children, when a soul has been placed under our responsibility by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we have to change ourselves. We have to be mindful of what we are doing every single moment of time before our children. Before I go on to the topic of company, the first thing, so today inshallah we want to talk, intend to talk about three things that we should do for our children, that every parent must do for their child. The Prophet 
has told us that the dua, the, the prayer of a father is guaranteed acceptance if they make it in the favor of their child, for their child. So my dear respected brothers, one thing that we often forget about is that how much important is our dua as parents for our children. We should constantly make dua for our children. Who else will we make dua for if not for our children? And among duas, the most important one is astaghfar. That we seek protection from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what we have done. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has promised that if somebody does astaghfar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps them with their children. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala helps them with sons. And what kind of sons? Who are obedient. Who are, uh, in other words of the Quran, who are the comfort of the eyes. The ayah that I, the ayah that I recited. In fact, it is a sunnah of anbiya to make dua for their children. We have, who does not know about Sayyidina Nuh ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, even his child was disobedient. Even his child was not listening to him insolent, but still he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for him. Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, who does not know what did he have to go through? His son that he got in an old age, he is leaving him behind on the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is fulfilling the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but at the same time saying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Rabbana inna ka ta'lamu ma anukhfi wa that pain, that sorrow, that concern that is in my heart for my child that I'm leaving behind on your command, you know it fully well. You know it fully well. So he's presenting it subtly before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the needs of his child. My dear respected brothers, Allah is quoting his dua in the Quran. Therefore, we know, we learn that what a valuable dua this must have been. What a valuable dua it must have been when a father was making that dua for his child. So, these du'as that our prophets have asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they are very complete, very perfect du'as. Rabbi ja'alni muqeem as-salati wa min zurriyati. Ya Allah, make me somebody who is persistent, who is very careful about their salah, wa min zurriyati, and from among my progeny. What is the effect of this du'a? What is the effect of this du'a? Allahu Akbar. It is in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and had been in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all the time. But the progeny of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam, his children, his lineage, several anbiya in it. Several anbiya in it. And in fact, the most beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasalam, the final Prophet of Allah, may me and my parents and all my beloved belongings be sacrificed on his life sallallahu alayhi wasalam. He came from among the lineage of Sayyidina Ibrahim ala Nabina alayhi salatu wasalam. So ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever concern that you may have in your heart, present it before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That Ya Allah, I want to do such and such things. Even if you can't find a way to do anything material in terms of correcting the state of your children, you may be helpless, you may feel helpless, but still you are never helpless when it comes to dua. And it is your biggest weapon. It is your biggest uh, armament that you can use. You ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, Ya Allah, this is the state of my children. I want, I, I intend for my children to be such and such way. Ya Allah, accept it from me. When you make this dua, when you present it before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah Akbar, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guaranteed, accepts it, accepts it. Sayyidah Maryam, before she was born, her mother, she had, she had made a pact with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever child I have, I will dedicate it to the service of your house. And she gave birth to a baby girl and she became confused. She said, what should I do? And she, what did she do? What did she do? She presented before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, this is my girl child and I have named her Maryam and I give her in your protection. Then what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? فَتَقَبَّلَهَا رَبُّهَا بِقَبُولٍ حَسَنٍ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted it from her. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted it very nicely, very, in a very, Allah, Allah gave a lot, lot of value to it. So my dear respected brothers, our dua is very important, very important for our children. We should begin with making dua for our children. That, ya Allah, this is our, the state of our children. And what dua? We should begin with, as Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam has taught us, 
Alhamdulillah alladhi Thanks to Allah, praise to Allah Chant the greatness of Allah upon giving us what we have The greatest blessing of awlad, greatest blessing of children And then give them in protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala And ask good things from Him Another dua that we have learned from the Quran where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned the traits of his beautiful accepted slaves. The ayah that I recited, وَالَّذِينَ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا هَبْ لَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ قُرَّةَ أَعْيُنْ Ulama have written, Hazrat Hassan Basri rahimahullah has explained this ayah that these people ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ya Allah, grant us spouses and children who are the comfort or the coolness of our eyes. What does this mean? This means that make them obedient to yourself. Make them obedient to you, Ya Allah. Because that is therein is where the comfort of a Muslim, a slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lies. Looking at people, looking at his progeny, being subservient and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the comfort of our eyes, we are asking for children and families that are obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you make me the leader of muttaqeen. This also means that you, because a person is naturally a leader of his family. So make my family muttaqi. Make my family those who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the first thing that we have to do for our children, that we have to make dua for them. Never, never underestimate the importance of your dua. Whenever we, I see that there's children coming to me who are learning the Quran and they are having a hard time or they are having a hard time doing good in this class in learning deen, I tell their parents to make dua for them. And then it solves the problem. I've experienced it multiple times. Then I, I, I ask their parents to make dua for them. And then when the father or the mother makes dua for their child, the child becomes, the, the problems of the child are resolved. So my dear respected brothers, the time is running out. Today we'll, we'll hold it at this, that the one important thing that we have to do and be mindful of is never ever stop making dua for your children. Make good duas for your children. Whatever you wish to ask for to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your children, no matter if you're seeing right before your eyes that you are not capable of giving them that, that your children are not capable of doing that. If for whatever reason, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Place your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is He controls everything. He has everything in his power. He can grant it to you. And when you do that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant it, inshaAllah. But the thing is that you have to have a sincerity and purity in your heart. That you have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with sincerity in your heart. That Ya Allah, I really want this. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the speaker and the listener action upon what was said and heard. Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen. Brothers, we are here with the family.